In the latest Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change's fifth assessment report, as IPCC AR5, there have been published a selection of representative concentration pathways, or RCPs. Dr Matt Watson from the School of Earth Sciences at the University of Bristol in the UK made this point strongly at a recent meeting at the Royal Society in London. This is why this is the uh, latest um, projections from the uh, International Panel of, Panel of Climate Change and the alarming thing, which again Sir Brian highlighted, is that these two scenarios actually explicitly include negative emissions technologies. So there is geoengineering of the flavour of carbon dioxide removal in the best case scenarios. The very, very alarming thing for us is that we are on this path here. That's AR 8.5. We are slap bang on this trajectory. And that puts us in, in, a, in, a, in a very, very different place in our children's or our grandchildren's lifetimes. Of the scenarios projected into the future, only two appear to be able to keep us close to a two degree rise of temperature. As Dr Watson mentioned just now, these are called respectively RCP 2.6 and RCP 4.5. This chart is intended to give an idea of what concentrations of greenhouse gases take us to what temperatures, with two degrees Celsius being the consensus limit for safety. The amber and the black coloured lines are from historical records and the red, green and blue are forecasts. As Watson alluded to, the RCP we are currently on is the red one titled RCP 8.5. This is not a survivable path. The RCPs from 4.5 to 8.5 will cause us to lose our tree sink and the ice sheets. Without the trees we will be inundated with greenhouse gases and humanity simply will not be able to survive. This leaves RCP 2.6, which has an estimated temperature range of 0.9 to 2.3 degrees Celsius. We are already very close to the 0.9 degrees scenario, so our chances of staying within the range of temperature are very slim, especially when you consider that emissions are still estimated to increase. Former President of the Royal Society, Professor Martin Rees, made this statement during our interview. I think we all hope that emission reductions will be achieved, but the uh lack of success of current attempts at international agreements encourages pessimism. And I honestly would bet, sad though it is, that the annual CO2 emissions are going to rise year by year for at least the next 20 years, and that will build up a cumulative level close to 500 parts per million by then. Based on what we know, it is fair to say that the Earth's sensitivity to greenhouse gas emissions mean that we will experience a great deal more heating yet with an added boost from feedback such as methane releases and tree loss. However, there is another fly in the ointment regarding nearly all of the representative concentration pathways. As Dr Watson said, they actually factor in a geoengineering solution called carbon dioxide removal, or CDR, whereby billions of tonnes of carbon are actually removed from the atmosphere and stored somewhere on Earth, either as some form of biochar or perhaps as living matter called biomass. But as is widely known, no such technology actually exists, and the research into developing it has been riddled with controversy, conspiracy, governmental inaction, misrepresentation, and a whole host of other inhibitors. The bottom line is that we are basing our collective future safety on this planet on pure science fiction. If we want to sequester CO2 and make a difference, we have to sequester something which is a significant fraction of 35 billion tonnes per year. So what's a significant fraction of 35 billion? Let's say 20 billion tonnes. 10 billion tonnes even, let's make a start. 10 billion tonnes a year of carbon sequestration. We don't do anything on this planet on that scale. We don't manufacture food on that scale. We don't mine iron ore on that scale. We don't even uh, produce oil, coal or gas on that scale. Iron ore is below a billion tonnes a year. How are we going to invent a technology from scratch, highly complicated technology, to the tune of 10 billion tonnes a year? Deputy Director of the Tyndall Centre for Climate Change Research, Professor Kevin Anderson, said this in a recent interview. It is also really important to note that we are already, when we are developing our emission scenarios, our ways of thinking about the future, virtually every single emission scenario that is aimed at meeting our climate change obligations that we sign up to internationally, so this idea of, of, and of keeping the rising global average temperature to below 2 degrees C, virtually every single emission scenario that we've so far generated on that 
includes geoengineering. It, it assumes it automatically works. Now that's fine if one or two of the scenarios have that, but almost every single scenario has it. So already what we're, have, what we're finding is that geoengineering, even though it, we, it's still in a very experimental conceptual stage, that we are assuming it will work and we are embedding it in our scenarios and if from those are what, what we go on to advise policymakers from. So it is already having a really very pernicious effect in trying to, in, in influencing what it is policymakers, what it is civil society, what it is that companies and other people are not directly involved in the science understand about climate change. And if you talk to most of the policymakers, they're not aware that actually already in all of the advice they're getting from scientists, there's an assumption that we'll be able to suck the CO2 out of the atmosphere in the future. That is already occurring today. We have a very real and very serious crisis on our hands. We cannot allow emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases to keep rising. We have to reverse the trend, and fast. We are currently at the dangerous level of 400 parts per million of carbon dioxide and rising. In the pre-industrial era, we were around 280 parts per million. To be safe, we should be aiming to reduce the concentration to beneath 320 parts per million. This means developing a means of removing billions of tonnes of greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. We should be very concerned that the IPCC have included the use of geoengineering technology in their future emission scenario, and that the actual technology does not currently exist and is not even being adequately researched or funded.